JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, that is on Charles, because today's the 1st of April 2022, guys. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's recorded session. Unfortunately, it's going to be recorded sessions for, uh, there will be, there will be recorded sessions for now. Um, but um, eventually, I think we'll get back to the live sessions, but just for this period um, for now. Um, I'll just have to stick to this plan. But anyway, guys, I still hope you'll find this useful. Um, so before we jump in into the charts, as always, let's quickly have a read through our uh, resist claimers. So, yep, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation. It should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, um, a quick mentioning of our JD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD Research page, which is also updated on a daily basis. So yep, check us out here on JFDBank.com and click on the Research tab right there on the top. So. Now then, uh, jumping into the charts, the first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei 225. So, yep, uh, we drifted lower, and we're still tr drifting lower by the because at the moment I'm recording this one um, half an hour uh, earlier, and uh, we still ha uh, can see that Nikkei is trading. So. Um, Basically, uh, yeah, uh, we can see that we drifted lower, we dropped below that 200-day uh, EMA. I talked about this hurdle here, this 27,604 territory. I said that if we drop and stay below it, then, yep, uh, we could consider maybe a bit of a larger correction here uh, to the downside. However, as you can see here, I mean, we drifted lower and, uh, yep, the uh, the bulls are trying to keep this one alive and, uh, yep, they're trying to keep the index above that 600 zone. So, uh, that 27,600 zone. So, um, in a way, I would say uh, at the moment, I cannot just do anything here. I just will just continue monitoring this um, because for me, for the upside even, I would like to see a break of this downside line and a push above the 28,339 zone first just to be a little bit more on the safe side for the downside um, yeah as I said I need to see uh, the body of the daily candle staying below this area below that 27,600 zone because at the same time um, at the same time, we would have the um, we would have the the 100 day EMA broken as well, and uh, we would see the index sitting below below that one as well. So, it, and that's where you know more more sellers could join in and drive the um, the index towards the uh, this short term upside support line taken from the low of the 9th of March. Uh, now, uh, jump, jumping into Shanghai Composite, of course, this one's open and uh, this one's looking a little bit more positive. So uh, we did get a bit of data uh, from China this morning. And let me just quickly open up that. Um, yes, yeah, so we did get the uh, Cajun, uh, Cajun, Cajun uh, manufacturing PMI number. Um, um, that one is, yeah, uh, that one re dropped, to be honest, that fell below the 50 mark. So that's quite interesting. Um, yeah, um, maybe the market is seeing this as a, you know, possibility that the, um, that the PBOC is not going to, uh, 
People's Bank of uh, of China um, is not gonna let's say step in. We know with the, with the removing their stimulus uh, or partial removal of, of stimulus. So and you have the market is seeing this as a positive. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see how this is gonna play out. We still have around what uh, an hour and a half left of trading here. Um, again, for example, at the moment uh, from the technical side, of course I'm keeping an eye on this downside line. Uh, um, we, as you can see here, we still have a bit of room here for the upside. And uh, uh, but um, I would like to see a stronger move above this barrier first, this uh, 3,280 zone. Uh, we did get a push today, but um, you can see it quickly fell back below it. But again, like, like I said, we still have time. Uh, we're flirting with that uh, 21 day EMA. So let's see where we're going to close uh, this week. Um, and uh, to be honest, I mean, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, next week, um, China will be on holiday for uh, mon on Monday and Tuesday. Yep, that's correct. Monday and Tuesday. There we go. So um, this is basically um, the last kind of trading day before um, China kind of goes on a longer holiday. So um, for now, like I said, for now, um, uh, let's see, like I said, let's see where this is going to end in relation to that 3,280 zone. If we somehow manage to stay above it, then well, this kind of increases the chances for a uh, larger correction to the upside because don't forget that we're still below this downside line taken from the high of the 13th of December so yeah um, in a way I mean this could this move still could be seen as a part as part of a correction um, if in case it stays below this um, yes this could be a, maybe a, a bit of a, a, a worry signal here for for investors but I would prefer to, to wait for a drop somewhere below this 3160 territory uh, just to be a little bit more on the safe side um, now jumping into the uh, German index DAX so um, here uh, you can see that the index yesterday drifted nicely to the downside and of course yes um, in general when when the US markets opened up they started selling off and uh, well as you can see here the technical picture shows us that well I mean this downside line continues to hold and uh, the cash index is currently sitting at around uh, 14,427 so basically not far from where it closed yesterday uh, we we still haven't tested the, mm, I think the 21 day EMA. Let me just quickly double check this. Um, um, sorry, no, I think on the cash index we did test that one. But again, it's going to be quite interesting to see if we can test it uh, during main trading hours. But either way, guys, I mean, as I mentioned before, that in order to go for higher levels here on this one, I still need to see a break of that, uh, this downside line. Again, I would need to see a break off because as you can see here, we had a, pu a push above this uh, barrier this week but then quickly reversed back down. So, so yeah, um, another push above this downside line, maybe also push above this 14,745 uh, level could do the trick for a few more buyers. But again, we'll get to that point if we do see that uh, break of this downside line. For now, I'm not saying that I'm bearish because for me to start looking at maybe lower levels, uh, a drop below somewhere below this uh, 14,100 zone would be needed. Now, jumping into the S&P 500. So um, here uh, we have, um, yeah, we have a um, we have a move, uh, a nice move to the downside. Of course, yesterday obviously it sold off. Um, the S and P was one of those, the biggest one is one of, one of the biggest losers. However, not by much, I would say, only by a few hundred hundreds of a percent. Um, either way, guys, um, at the moment I would say this is uh, does this doesn't look very promising and uh, to be honest it's leaning a little bit more towards the downside and uh, as I said before that if it drops back below this 4,595 territory then this could in a way increase the chances for this one to move lower and uh, as you can see by my arrow drawn here that um, at the moment um, I'm kind of leaning towards that maybe a test of this 
100 day EMA together with the 21 day EMA and if it provides good support we could see a nice rebound and push higher however if that fails then yes we'll start evaluating lower levels but at the moment the cash index is sitting at around 4547 mark uh, basically um, basically not far uh, slightly above where it closed yesterday. Um, one of my, of course, my favorite Fibonacci here to the rescue. Um, as you can see here, we have managed to uh, do the 23.6% retracement on the Fibonacci yesterday. So, okay, so that's interesting. That's why we are rebounding right now. Um, however, if this area gets broken, this 4,525 area approximately around here gets broken, then, uh, yep, uh, like I said, I'm going to aim for that 100 day EMA or even uh, the 38.2% retracement on the Fibonacci. So keep that in mind. So something uh, like this here could be possible. Uh, now, DXY dollar index. So, um, okay, beautiful <laughs> rebound. This is, a, if you remember, the, proud, the whole kind of uh, this week and last week, and in general throughout this whole month, I, I kept or the month of March, I kept on talking about this range, you know. So, and yesterday, even yesterday, I said, like, wait for it, wait for it, because, you know, we might get a rebound again, and uh, because we're in a very nice range here. So, so yeah, we got a rebound, and... Uh, at the moment kind of uh we're you know trying to climb back or actually we are climbing back already above that 98.40 zone i talked about this level and i said that if we um if we climb above it and stay above it then yes i will maybe consider a possible move towards the upper side of the uh of this range again but um at the moment yeah we are uh climbing back up yep we're kind of slightly above that area so that's good um but again if you are you know interested in this idea then yes uh because like i said we could, there is still a good chance for this one to move higher but uh, guys have your stop loss in place at the moment um i would say it's um it's a bit of a tricky one um and uh yeah it's uh it's something to watch. It's something quite interesting, to be honest. I mean, it kind of works out the way I was. I kept on talking about it, so that's that's all nice and dandy, I would say here. Um, but again, long story short, um, keep your eyes on that 98.40 zone. As long as we remain above it, yeah, I'll continue aiming higher. Uh, gold. So gold uh, is stuck. Um, that's the reason why I have this 1966 level that I kept on talking about. I need to see a push above that that barrier in order to go for some higher levels. At the moment, uh, we're just seeing a commodity which is oscillating around its 21-day EMA here, shown as the yellow line. So, um, and even with the downside, we can't really get comfortable with the downside because, well, obviously here, I mean, it keeps on pushing away from this 1918 zone. So we need to see a nice good drop below it first. Uh, we would like to see the body of the daily candle staying below it in order to go for lower levels. Uh, WTI oil, so yeah. Um, oh, and by the way, of course, with gold, keep your eyes on it today because that's where, you know, the, the excitement could come in. We do have uh, quite important data coming out today. I mean, from the U.S. Um, in general, the uh, today's day is quite an eventful uh, one. So. Uh, we did get uh, already some PMI numbers from, yeah, as I said, from China, as I mentioned already. Um, then um, you know, we got from Australia, which came out better than uh, expected. Uh, Japan also produced its uh, PMI numbers, uh, manufacturing PMI numbers, I mean. <clears throat> so they also came out better than expected. Today, later on, we do have um, the European ones in the individual states, I mean, from the, of the of Europe also, in addition to UK's. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and of course, the main event is the non-farm payrolls, the, the job numbers from the US. So I would say if you do like to trade that, then yes, I hope you have a, you know, that's good. I hope, but I hope you have a, um, you know, a good stop, a good comfortable stop loss for yourself. So, you know, you you are the ones who need to establish what you're comfortable with of losing, for example, in case it goes, you know, against you. So, but hopefully everything goes 
in your favor. Um, in general, guys, I always say that, you know, wait for the number first to come out. Otherwise, it's just sometimes the a bit of a, like a gamble. Uh, well, it's always a gamble, but this one's even more of a gamble. Um, so yeah, uh, keep your eyes on the numbers. Uh, those are going to be quite interesting to see how they come out because unemployment rate is expected to improve. However, the creation of jobs is expected to decline a little bit. Well, let's wait and see, of course. Uh, now, WTI oil, and there we go. So yesterday, yesterday we have, uh, let me actually just jump into a monthly chart, and this is, yeah, this is where the interesting bit comes in. So yesterday we've closed um, just slightly above that uh, 100 mark, and uh, yeah, but we've definitely closed below this hurdle. So, but look at the distance. I mean, how far we have drifted back down. Um, in a way, don't get me wrong. What I'm considering here right now is now we're seeing a nice correction here uh, to the downside. We might see maybe even a, a, a further one. I mean, as long as this stays below this 99.19 level, the one that I talked about, yep, I'm gonna aim for 93.56 level or even this upside line. And then it's going to be quite interesting to see if we can actually rebound and push, you know, back to the upside. So I'm not excluding that scenario. But again, at the moment, I'm very careful. I'm leaning slightly to the downside only if it stays below that 99.19 level that I have here. If it doesn't stay above it, all this area would be somewhat of a neutral one for me, but if it starts breaking this downside line and pushes, you know, above uh, certain levels, for example, this one right here, um, uh, let me just put this one on the chart, there we go, above this 108.70 level, then yes, I will maybe consider a bit of a move to the upside, however, I'll get a little bit more comfortable with that idea if we pop above that 115 zone. Uh, Litecoin, so, um, drifted to the downside, uh, corrected to the downside, I would say, and uh, yeah, we tested this this 21 day EMA again. Uh, we're testing this downside line as well. So um, this is going to be quite interesting to see if we can hold on to this and uh, you know, in, if this can act as a nice trampoline here um, for a, you know, and if it can move to the upside initially, as what I said before, that I'm aiming for that um, 200 day EMA. I'm still aiming for that. It's roughly around that 144 zone, which is uh, marked in by the highest point of February or should I say near the highest point of February. Um, so yeah, uh, there is still upside potential for this one, especially like I said, if it rebounds from this uh, trampoline here. And uh, yeah, if it um, if it does that, then my, like I said, my next target is that 200 EMA. Uh, jumping into a few pairs, AUD, USD. So yeah, uh, drifting to the downside, of course the commodities are, and the dollar, uh, the dollar is strengthening, the commodities are slightly weakening. Um, and uh, yeah, we're seeing this effect here on AUD USD. So um, to be honest, as I've mentioned this before, I said that we did get a nice already up move. <clears throat> so maybe a bit of a setback here could be possible. Um, my next target is the 0.7441 level here marked by the high of the 7th of March. And uh, yeah, if we do rebound from this somewhere from this area, then uh, we might see a nice push to the upside towards that 0.7556 zone marked by the highest point of October of last year. Um, so yeah, if, um, if we do um, if we do hold on to this area here and if this area acts as a good area of support, then yeah, a nice rebound here could be possible. Again, to see where, for example, how, how much we could correct here. Um, basically, as you can see here, this 23.6% retracement on the Fibonacci is kind of close to this area. So, um, you know, I'm keeping an eye on this one for now. AUDJPY. So, um, also uh, had a good move to the downside, but look at this, the 23.6% did provide a good support. I kept on talking about this uh, through this week, uh, from the beginning of this week, actually. So, and we corrected lower. Yes, we got that uh, hold up near this, uh, near 
here this 23.6 percent retracement and it said to you if you remember I said to you that I'm um, targeting that 91 zone which we managed to reach perfectly now we're rebounding from it mm, let me just adjust a few levels here um, so if we're looking for some further downside then a drop below that 23.6 percent is required um, just to be a little bit more on the safe side and if we do yeah if we do drop below this then I'll go for that 38.2 percent retracement on the Fibonacci which is which could be at the same time let's say by the time it could travel here it could also test that 21 day EMA so everything kind of you know would uh, work out nicely here now um, in terms of um, in terms of the upside, now I would prefer to wait maybe for a push somewhere above this 92.69 70 zone, uh, just because I think if I let me say, let me just quickly remind ourselves what that level was here in history. Um, yeah, that was this one right here and yeah it was a good level here the inside swing low of the 29th of June and also the highest point of August of 2015 now um, if we clear that level then yes I will go for uh, the upside again USD CAD very quickly on that one um, to be honest not much is happening it's still kind of you know moving sideways here and uh, if you remember I talked about this one I said that in order for me to go for some higher levels a push above this 1.25 87 level is needed at the same time we would probably break the 21 day EMA and this could you know potentially attract more buyers however we're below that still we're below all of the EMA so the downside scenario is not off the table yet however I need to see that drop below this whole kind of area right here and uh, yeah um, at the moment I would say at the moment it's um, it's it's a difficult one I mean until we get you know it, I do understand it's maybe frustrating you know to wait here but um, well that's part of the game guys um, so we need to see a clear drop below this area in order to go for lower levels and this area and let's say the last level here for me is the the 1.2450 zone if we drop below it then yeah I'll go for the downside and if it stays below it, that's the more more important part here. Uh, GPP CAD. So um, interesting, quite nice re re uh, correction here to the upside. So that's all fine. We're still below this downside line. Um, however, in order to go for lower levels, uh, I need to see a drop below the 1.6366 zone here, and then yes, we could go uh, for lower levels. For the upside, uh, pretty straightforward. The break of this downside line is needed, um, and. And then maybe what I'm going to stick to is I'm going to keep an eye on that 21 day EMA. So how it could play out. So we could see that break of this downside line, for example. And if we do see that break, then I'll aim for that 21 day EMA, uh, which, you know, might provide a bit of resistance initially. And then, yeah, we would, you know, have to see how it plays out there. But if that gets broken, then uh, higher levels could be met. So at the moment, um, I would say uh, be very careful. Um, yes, um, I'm like I said, I'm I'm kind of um, cautiously bearish on this one, but um, I need to see a confirmation break first. Um, Euro Aussie, oh, something that I mentioned here this week, and uh, boom, there we go. Nice hold up near this downside line so yeah I mean it seems that the bears are not giving up or at least trying not to give up um, uh, the only issue here for me is right now let's say with the downside is that I would need to see a drop below the one, that 1.4566 level here first uh, you know just to be a little bit more on the safe side at the moment we had a recovery this whole area here above this uh, this hurdle and below this downside line is is a bit of a neutral one for me because just on one on you know on one hand uh, it's still below this downside line on the other hand uh, we kind of had already quite a decent decline so maybe a bit of a you know a retracement could be possible however a break above the uh, this downside line this this 1.49 uh, 17 zone or the end or or an and uh, you know uh, this push above the 21 day EMA would be needed so there's a lot of factors here still uh, you know a lot of boxes need to be ticked before we can aim uh, higher but still there is this option so keep your eyes on that one uh, Euro GPY um, beautiful retracement here also from that 23.6% on the Fibonacci so that's interesting um, 
now um, in terms of the upside now we're, as you can see also we are traveling back above this hurdle the one that I talked about in the beginning of this in, in the middle of this week I said that if we drop below the 1.135.32 zone right here then yeah I'll aim for that 23.6 percent retracement on the Fibonacci now uh, we're climbing back above it so that doesn't of course that doesn't mean that suddenly we're gonna be you know very very positive here no uh, probably I would stick to this hurdle this 136.84 that's yesterday's high if we pop above it then yeah I'll go for higher levels if we if we struggle I'll remain neutral but if it starts um, drop dropping below that uh, 20 uh, 23 point six percent retracement on the Fibonacci then yep um, this is where it could open the door towards lower levels and potentially we could even aim for that 38.2 percent retracement here uh, which could at the time you know perfectly coincide with the uh, 21 day EMA and also would be not far from uh, the high here of the uh, 11th of February I'm not saying the highest point of February the highest point is February somewhere around here but this this high right here uh, this um, the 132.65 could be an interesting target to watch but only if we drop below that 23.6 percent retracement on the Fibonacci and finally Euro USD um, so uh, drifted back down down, back below this hurdle now um, what I said to you before that if we stay above this as always I mean we yes we break out we do have these breakouts but if we stay above it then yes I uh, will continue aiming higher but as you can see here yesterday we didn't stay I mean the US dollar strength and then this pair drifted back down the only little positive thing here is that we are still balancing above that 21 day EMA and uh, of, of course above this upside line so in other words if you're looking for some upside guys there is still potential um, but we need to see a push back above this 1.1121 zone if we don't have that we don't get that um, this is where uh, let me get, get rid of this downside line this is where I'll keep an eye on this upside line if we break below it um, I will go for slightly lower levels but I'll go to this my preferred area Area, which I talked about previously this 1.0891 uh, if we get a hold up somewhere around here um, then yeah maybe a bit of a rebound here could be possible but again if that gets clear then yes further declines could be possible guys so keep that in mind at the moment like I said I'm keeping an eye on this 1.1121 uh, zone I want to see what's gonna happen with it today because as I said today we do have the NFPs um, and yeah um, Keep your eyes on those guys um but like i said if you know I, I would suggest to wait until the number comes out and see what the market wants to do and then you know do your thing do your magic anyway guys i have to wrap it up here thank you very much for watching and listening i really appreciate your time guys your views your likes your comments um i really appreciate that and thank you very much for you know watching this i do apologize for not running this live but um it, this will be the case um for now i mean probably for the you know uh, for the, uh, definitely next week as well and probably maybe next week after that but again we'll see how this is going to play out and uh, yeah uh for now for now like i said i hope you will enjoy these recorded sessions as well thank you very much guys have a wonderful trading day today don't over trade it's friday and uh yeah have a wonderful weekend as well so thank you very much and i'll see you on monday bye bye